Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve messengers. Twelve messengers. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve messengers. Twelve messengers. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve gates. Twelve gates. Twelve messengers. Shalom, welcome to B'nai Yeshua Synagogue, home of the Miami Beach Israel Revival. It's so wonderful to have you with us on this YATI Shabbat Video Club. It's an honor to minister the eternal word of Yahweh to you, your family, your mishpacha, and all your friends. We welcome you to join us right here in the center of World Two House Messianic Yisrael Revival as you pull up a chair and get ready for today's message in the word of Yahweh. Again, we want to thank each of you from the bottom of our hearts for signing up, joining, and being a part of the worldwide outreach of the Miami Beach Israel Revival. Let's go into today's message as we sit back with our hearts open, our ears leaning forward as Yahweh Eloheinu feeds us with the goodness and heritage of our father, Yaakov. Shabbat Shalom. Rejoice Israel. While the world goes to hell, rejoice Israel. He has saved us from the fires of the hell. He's delivered us with a ransom and a great price. By his blood we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. By the Ruach of Kodesh, the victory, the resurrection, we are redeemed in the eternal love of Yeshua. Let's praise the name of Yahweh. Songs of the crying young and old night. for a few hours a message uh, depends how long we go a message entitled the great Ephraimite 
sellout. The great Ephraimite sellout. It has nothing to do with flea markets now, okay? The great, we taping? Video ministry, yes? Okay, top. The great Ephraimite sellout. Go with me to Yirmiyahu, please. Yirmiyahu, chapter 3. In verse 16. Hear me out. 3 and verse 16. It shall be. Are you with me? Does that mean yes? Yes. yes. I know the front row is with me. What about the other rows? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Our sister Miriam is with us. It shall be when you have increased and shall bear fruit in the land in those days, declares Yahweh, that they will no longer say the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, neither would it come to heart, nor will they remember it, nor would they visit it, nor would it be made again. At that time, circle those words at that time, Yerushalayim will be called the throne of Yahweh, and all nations shall be gathered to it to the name of Yahweh, to Yerushalayim, and no longer walk after the stubbornness of their heart. In those days, circle those words please, verse 18. In those days, the house of Yahuda shall go to the house of Yisrael. And they shall come together. Hallelujah. Circle those words. Come together. Out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance to your father. Again, preaching for a few hours. The great Ephraimite sellout. According to the word of Yahweh, what's interesting, in verse 16, I want you to look at that. It shall be in those days, verse 18, in the days when the two houses, Yehuda and Ephraim, come together, in the days of the two house restoration and regathering of the exiles of Israel, in those days, when, then, when, then, when, then, when, then, in those days, when Yehuda and Ephraim actually come to like each other and actually come together, in those days, we will no longer, verse 16, talk and remember, we will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant. Neither will it come to our heart, neither will we remember the Ark of the Covenant. We will not look for it, visit it, think about it, or anything like that, because in those days, it'll never be made again. You know, I was reading Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48 the other day, and one thing I noticed is that there are sacrifices for the Rosh Kodesh, there are sacrifices for the Yom Shabbat. There are sacrifices for every single day of the week. But there are no prescribed ceremony, ceremonial offerings, grain offerings, meat offerings, drink offerings, bullock offerings. There is nothing for Yom Kippur, for the Day of Atonement. There is nothing. And then I realized that I, according to the scripture in Yirmiyahu 2, 6, uh, 3.16, I realized that in those days, that's into the Atid Lavo, into the Millennial Kingdom, and in those days, the two houses will already be what? Echad, under the Messiah Yeshua, there will already be one. Now we're in the beginning of the restoration and regathering of both houses of Israel. But in those days, the restoration and regathering will be a completed action. Amen, somebody. Amen. So in those days, when the two houses are fully and completely reunited, turn to your neighbor and say fully and completely. I didn't like that. Fully and completely. When they are fully and completely reunited, we're not going to be writing in for ministry information about the Ark of the Covenant. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Who's got the Ark of the Covenant? Is it in Ethiopia? Is it under Mount Moriah? Does Michael Rudin know where the Ark of the Covenant is? Where can we find out? Are there any videos that we can study the location? We remember that we're looking for, searching for, thinking about, meditating upon, the location of the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Right. But according to this scripture alone, and of course there are many other scriptures that validate this, 
according to this scripture alone, we haven't missed the reunion, have we? We, the restoration has not occurred. Why? Because we're still talking about the Ark of the Covenant. There are whole ministries that are dedicated to finding the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Their entire videos, tapes, whatever, tape lending library, are completely dedicated to looking, finding, discovering, searching, perhaps the blood fell on the top, the blood fell on the east side, the blood fell on the west side, it's under Mount Moriah, it's under Mount Demar about we're looking searching thinking meditating talking we do. has anyone in this room ever spoken about the ark of the covenant i have huh you ever speak about the ark of the covenant did they ever pique your interest did they ever tweak your 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 curiosity then if you talked about it and discussed it and sent away for information about it we haven't missed the reunion because when the two houses are completely reunited, we, that won't be in our heart, it won't be in our mouth, it won't be in our mind. Because why? It won't be made anymore. When the two houses of Israel come together, fully and completely through Mashiach, in the Ati Lavo, or the coming millennial kingdom, where will the Ark of the Covenant be? Where will the Ark of the Covenant be? I don't know, but it won't be among Israel because we won't know where it is. It will never be made again. You know all those ministries? that say we cannot rebuild the temple until we find the Ark of the Covenant? Right? Hello? We cannot rebuild the temple until we find well, According to this, it says it'll never be made again. Who's right, Yahweh or ministry? Oh, these ministries. It will never be made again. Start building your temple now, honey, because it's not going to be built again. Yahweh won't allow it. So in the days when we no longer worry, meditate, or think whatever happened to the Ark of the Covenant, those are the days, look at verse 18, in those days, when, 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 then, when. The very fact that we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant now proves we haven't missed the reunion. We haven't missed the restoration and regathering of both houses of Israel. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? We haven't missed the reunion. Now, Messianic Judaism says the Jewish people today are the two houses. That Ephraim is not among the Gentiles. That Ephraim has been immigrated or assimilated in Judah. Really? Really? Well, that must mean that we're not talking about the Ark of the Covenant anymore. Because if, if all 12 tribes, the fullness of the 12 tribes, have been uh, assimilated into the house of Judah, that must mean that the Ark of the Covenant doesn't come to mind, conversation, discussion. But wait a second. There's a whole bunch of Christians and Nazarene Israelites speaking about the location, finding, rebuilding, and, and, and so forth of the Ark of the Covenant. So we haven't missed the reunion, have we? No, sir. Come on. And you won't find the lost sheep of the house of Israel in Judah. You'll find them exactly where, where Yahweh said they would be, in the nations. You want to find the ten tribes? They're in the nations. They, they haven't joined Judah after Babylon in the days of Ezra and Nebuchadnezzar. Sorry, as long as we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant, we haven't missed the reunion. Are, are there still teaching ministries and discussions going on about the Ark of the Covenant? That means we haven't missed the reunion. In those days when the two houses fully come together, it won't come to mind. Is that what it says? That's exactly what it says. It says what it says. I know it because I've just read it. Let's read it again. It shall be, when you have increased, you shall bear fruit in the land. Notice, in the land. In those days, what days? The Atib all the millennial kingdom. When you bear fruit in the land, exile is over, the Galut is over. They will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant, neither will it come to heart or mind, remember it, visit it. Today there are tours, let's visit the Ark. Join my tour and join my procession and join my group as we visit the Ark. Yahweh yeah, says in those days they won't visit it. They won't talk about it. They won't remember it. As long as they're visiting it, talking about it, looking for it, searching for it, hello, we haven't missed the restoration. But it is a yet future what? Event. Hallelujah. Does it make sense? Yes. <coughs> make a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Totally. All right, now look at verse 18. In those days, the house of Yehuda, that's the Jewish, Jewish Israel, shall go to the house of Israel, that's Ephraim or non-Jewish Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north back to the promised land that I have given them as an inheritance to your fathers. 
Circle those words. Come together. Right now. Over me. Circle those words. Come together. Circle those words. Circle. I'm looking for circles. This is not Amway, but I'm looking for circles. Circle those words. Come together. Got it? Tov. Now, when Yahweh brings the restoration of the two houses, it will be both houses coming together. Good. I'm glad you got that. Now go to Yirmiyahu, chapter 50. Yirmiyahu, chapter 50. This message again, the great Ephraimite sellout. The great Ephraimite sellout. The great Ted, Ephraimite, since you chucked me back there. The great Ephraimite sellout. Yirmiyahu 50 and verse 4. Yirmiyahu 50 and verse 4. In those days, at that time, stop. When you see that expression, in those days, at that time, what's the first thing that should come to your mind? The millennial kingdom. That is a yet future event. That's a Hebraic idiomatic expression, meaning a yet what? Future event. In those days, at that time. When? Then. When? Then. In those days, at that time, it is a millennial kingdom event when Yeshua returns to make it a fact, hello, to make it accomplished, hello. So we see in verse four, in those days, at that time, declares Yahweh, the children of Israel, and that's Ephraim, non-Jewish Israel, shall come, and the children of Yehudah come together right now. So those words, come together. Have we seen this once? Yes. Have we seen this twice? Yes. Will we keep seeing this throughout scripture? Yes. Yahweh is saying to us who are thick of skull and dense of heart, when one comes, the other comes. They come together. They do not come separately. They do not come in separate airplanes. They do not come in separate time frames. They do not come in separate dispensations, they come together. Hallelujah. The children of Israel shall come, and the children of Yehuda together, weeping as they come, seeking Yahweh their Elohim. They will ask the way to Zion, their faces toward it. They will say, come, let us join ourselves to Yahweh on an Ephraimite tour. I mean, pardon me. In an everlasting covenant. Okay, so what is going to be the vehicle, the means, by which Yahweh draws both houses to Israel together? The eternal everlasting covenant, also known as the Brit Chadashah, or the renewed covenant of Moshiach Yahshua. What's going to bring Ephraim and Yehuda together back to the land of Israel, back to the things of Yahweh, back to the road to Zion, back to the ancient paths, back to the ways of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? What's going to bring them back? The everlasting, eternal, renewed covenant of Yahweh's dear, blessed, and only, only begotten Son. We're not all sons of Yahweh. We're all adopted into the family. He has one begotten Son, His Son, Yeshua. He only has His only one begotten Son. Now, now watch this. Look at the end of verse 5. In an everlasting covenant, never to be forgotten. Never to be forgotten. Because my people have been wandering sheep. Verse 6. Their shepherds, their false messianic shepherds, have led them away and astray, turning them away on the mountains. What mountains? The mountains of Israel. You missed that. The great deception is now in the land. It's in the, on the mountains of Israel. More and more false prophets. Listen, more and more born again false prophets. How many know you can be born again and still be a false prophet? Because we've got these people who have a long beard, they have a big robe, a very nice robe that they picked up at Woolworth before it went out of business. And, and they go to Jerusalem and do 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 do. Now all of a sudden the Jerusalem complex kicks in. You ask any Israeli government official what the Jerusalem complex is, they'll tell you. You get a religious nut cake who's full of fruits, cakes, and nuts, and he goes to Jerusalem and all of a sudden he's either the Mashiach 
the leader of a big group, or a messianic figure, or an end time apoc apocalyptic restorer and redeemer. So, I I'm gonna pick on Chris because he's on the front row today. Chris loves Yahweh, right? But if Chris goes to Israel, there are these demonic spirits that are moving around that can turn Chris into an apocalyptic doomsday cult leader. Now, it's not his fault. That's just, it's known as a Jerusalem complex. Hello? So, that's what's happening. So, we've got all these people who are not born again, or they are born again, going to Jerusalem, on the mountains of Israel, and Yahweh is taking the sheep of Israel and bringing them to his son, but they're not doing that. They're taking him away from Yeshua and bringing them to themselves. Do you understand? Yeah. No, I was picking on you. It could happen to me. It could happen to me. It's happening now. We have former Messianic ministers who go to Jerusalem and bingo, overnight they turn the Jerusalem complex, which is like a pestilence, it's a disease, turns their head, they can't think straight, they don't believe the gospel anymore, they're cow-cowing and kissing at the feet of rabbinic Judaism, trying to make wheels and deals and all kinds of works of the flesh to find Ephraim a way to return to the land apart from the prescribed everlasting covenant of Yahweh's son that shall never be forgotten. Now notice where this deception takes place, Tan. Tan, notice where it takes place. On the mountains of Israel. They've forgotten their resting place, and because they have forgotten their resting place, the shepherds lead the sheep astray, not in China, Greece, Asia, or Taiwan, or under the auspices of Chiang Kai-shek, the now disposed despot. No, this happens in Israel. So more and more in the last days, we're gonna see believers going to Israel, who then get to Israel, and through the Jerusalem complex and the demonic spirits in Israel, deny Yeshua, and they just set up shop on a front on Ben Yehuda Street, and they set up shop in Tel Aviv or Ramatayim or somewhere waiting for the suckers, that's you, to come there and to be poisoned with the wells to cause you to forget the everlasting covenant and to submit to them so they can lead you astray, not in your hometown. You thought you were going home. You were going home only to find that in your home you left the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Be careful about going to Israel before the time. There's a lot of people waiting in line. They're waiting. In, they're, they're lying in wait. I believe the Torah calls that first-degree murder, not second-degree murder. Lying in wait. They're lying in wait, waiting for you to sign up and get there so they can deprogram you. But when they went there, they were born again. They were sending newsletters. Oh, praise Yeshua, Yeshua the Lord, Yeshua the... And all of a sudden, they got into the, the spirits, the demonic oppression in Israel. Something got to them. And all of a sudden, they're, according to Torah, they're, they're ready to commit first-degree murder. They're lying in wait. They're lying in wait for you to get there. And what are they going to do to you when you get there? They will do anything they can because either they've already denied the faith in Israel or they're confused. Can I tell you something about a confused teacher? Hmm. Yeah. you got no business sitting under a teacher who's praying about the faith. He's not sure about the faith. He's confused about the virgin birth. He's confused about the bodily resurrection. He's confused about the second coming of Yeshua. You might as well go, you might as well go to a Buddhist temple and learn there. Okay? You really want to take your eternal soul and sit under a, a teacher who's studying the basics of the faith? If you're studying, that's fine. Yahweh has no problem with people seeking truth. Get out of the ministry and come back when you know what the truth is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know what the truth is or I shouldn't have this microphone. That's right. And Yahweh has full freedom to take this microphone from me if I don't know what the truth is. What business do I have instructing the sheep? What kind of a shepherd I am? And would I be? So now it says that when Yahweh puts his plan into action, notice, they will come together. I want you to notice in verse um, 4, the children of Yehuda and the children of Israel will come together weeping as they come, not converting to denying Yeshua or converting to a faith that denies the birth of the Shah or converting to a faith that denies the virgin birth. They will come together through the only everlasting covenant cut with man. No other covenant in scripture is called everlasting except the renewed covenant. That's the only covenant that is called eternal everlasting. Why? Because Yahweh will never make another covenant between him and man. Never. There'll never be another covenant. You're either going to get in this one or go down with the ship. 
There'll never be another covenant cut between Yahweh and man. Okay? Except the eternal covenant. The everlasting covenant. When you see the term everlasting covenant, it speaks of the renewed covenant. Tov. Now go, so, so what do we learn in Jeremiah 3, 16 what, and through 18, Jeremiah 50 through 4 through 6? We learn that when Yehuda comes to the land, listen, who else is going to come with him? Ephraim. Ephraim, the children of Israel, the non-Jewish Israelites. They're going to come together. Now wait a second. Now all this is important because what I'm going to be sharing with you, you're going to see what's going on there is not of Yahweh. Okay? Because when Judah comes back, redeemed, everlasting covenant, Judah, Ephraim will come back together. Together. And through the everlasting covenant, not through Ephraimite tours. And not through visiting and searching and archaeological digs for the Ark of the Covenant. So am I against an archaeological dig? It depends. If it's there, if you, if you like archaeology, go have a good time. <laughs> okay? But if you go in there to look for the Ark of the Covenant, you know what you're saying? The two houses haven't come together. Uh -huh. If you're going to go somewhere, so, so the two, are the two houses going to come together? Yes. When? Then. In those days, at that time. When? In those days, at that time. Not through man's efforts, but through the hands of the Nazarene. It's going to be his hands that bring the two houses together. Hallelujah. Go with me, please. 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 Go with me, please, to Yechezkel. I got my own main corner there. Go to Yechezkel, 37. Yechezkel, 37. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Yechezkel, Ezekiel, 37. Verse number 16. We'll start with verse 15. And the word of Yahweh came to me. When you see the Tanakh, the word of Yahweh came, what does that mean? Let's, let's rephrase that. Let's, let's reword that. When it says the word of Yahweh came to me, what does that mean? Yeshua came. Right? In the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, the word was Yahweh. Yeshua came to Jeremiah. The word of Yahweh came to Ezekiel. The word Yeshua came to Ezekiel. Whenever you see the word of Yahweh came, that means Yeshua came to Ezekiel. Yeshua came to Jeremiah. Amen. Now look at verse 16. And you, Ben Adam, you son of man, take a tree... Verse 16, take a tree, the word is ants, stick, improperly translated stick, it's tree. Take a tree for yourself, write on it for Yehuda and the children of Israel, his companions. Those are members of the ten tribes that have what? Joined Yehuda. Then take another stick and write on it for Yosef, the stick of Ephraim, for all the house of Israel, his companions. Why is the stick of Yosef? in the hand of Ephraim. Two reasons. Ephraim is the greater tribe numerically. Numerically, the ten tribes of the north were called Ephraim Yisrael. And also because the birthright passed from who? From Reuben to Joseph to Manasseh to Ephraim. The Bechorah, or the birthright, passed all the way to Ephraim. Okay, so Ephraim has the birthright. Tov. Ephraim has the birthright, and it's also the, the largest tribe of the north. Hence, all ten tribes became known as Ephraim. When we say Ephraim, we're not talking about one tribe, are we? We're talking about the collective term for all ten tribes. Ten tribes of the north. Then bring them together, verse 17, bring them together for yourself into one tree. One what, what kind of tree? One olive tree. Obviously. The word sticks is not in the Hebrew. It's tree. <laughs> Two trees become one olive tree. They become one echad in your hand. Now, verse 18. The children of your people speak to you. They'll say, won't you show us what you mean by these? These two trees. Ezekiel, here's what you say to them. Thus saith the master Yahweh. See, I am taking the stick of Yosef in the hand of Ephraim. And the tribes of Israel, his chavurim, his companions, I will give them to him with a stick, with a tree of Yehuda. I will make those two sticks one tree in my hand. Circle those words, my hand. The end of verse 19. Circle those words, my hand. Amen. The trees which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes. Thus saith the Master Yahweh, verse 21. 
See, I am taking the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone. Where are the children of Israel? The among the nations. It doesn't say among the house of Judah. They're among the nations. Wherever they have gone, I will gather them into all around. I will gather them, circle those words, and shall gather them. Circle those words, I shall gather them, shall gather them. And look at the end of verse 21. I shall bring them into the land. Circle those words. I shall bring them. Who's going to bring them? I. Who's I? The Master Yahweh, Yeshua, through his son Yeshua. Okay, so we see when the Judah returns, who returns with Judah? Ephraim. How are they going to return? Through the everlasting covenant. Who's going to be the one bringing the two houses to return at the same time? I, the Master Yahweh, through his son Yeshua. I. Not man. We heard that word today. Don't trust in the arm of flesh. Not man. I. Yahweh makes these two trees into one tree. Amen? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay, now look at the end of verse 21. I'll bring him into the land and call 1 800 E for my tours. Is that what it says? Call 1 800 Torah True Accounts? Is that what it says? Huh? Joe, take a boat and go the old fashioned way and meet Judah in the land. And if the Orthodox rabbis are really nice and they really respect you, and you promise to consider the things of Orthodox Judaism, and you promise to think about denying Yeshua, then you'll come back to the land. Is that what it says? No. Yahweh says, I'll bring them back. So if Yahweh's going to bring both houses, what houses? The house of Yosef and the house of Yehuda. If Yahweh's going to bring both houses back, how many men are going to be bringing the two houses back? None. Yahshua will do the bringing back. Because in the days when Yahshua brings them back, you won't need the, the, the Ark of the Covenant because the temple is going to be rebuilt and Yeshua is going to conduct the sacrifices.